everybody, welcome back. Man, if you made it through that last video, congratulations. That was a doozy. But that should be the last really big chunk of information in this project. From here on out, it should be hopefully a little bit shorter ones. Not to say this one might drag on a tiny bit, but um, definitely as we get closer to the end, they, they go a little faster. But a couple more details about Topo Solids. For one thing, I don't think I mentioned in the last video, on the site plan, once I'm done with those detail lines, I can single click on them and delete them. They serve their purpose. I don't really need those detail lines in here anymore. They're just kind of like sketch notes to help me do my layout work. So we can clean that up a little bit. So a little bit of housekeeping there. The main reason why we're here though, sub regions. So what the heck does that mean? Well, now that I have this nice hill, you know, rolling landscape, relatively flat around the house. I don't need it to be grass everywhere. I gotta drive some cars in here and park them. I need some places to do that. So by the house, you know, I wanna put a concrete pad because I like to park on concrete in case I wanna wash the car and keep it nice and neat. Or maybe I need to do some work when I'm at the cabin. I wanna have a nice spot to lay and not be in the mud or so on and so on. So sub regions, if we left click once on our topo solid, right, it turns blue. We now have an option to subdivide. So I click on that. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. The first one's gonna be real easy here. We are just going to draw a rectangular pad. Actually, I'm gonna hit escape a little too close to the house. Try that again. There we go. Just a nice square rectangular pad along the side for a couple cars. Green check mark. Go to 3D. Let's see what's going on there. Well, that's weird. It's floating up above. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. So, but I can click on it. The nice thing is that even though it's raised up out of the ground, even though it's got the diagonal, it's matching the contour of the ground. So for one thing, all subregions pretty much get put down to one inch. You can't make them zero. But you can do one inch like that so they're nearly flat. And then we can also change the category. And as I said, I want this to be concrete. And I can just say concrete. There we go. Cast in place gray. And awesome. Now one could argue that the concrete, the ground is really flat. Or if the ground was curved more, I mean, if you did a subregion on the hill, you'd have a concrete sloped hill. Um, this is pretty flat ground, so I'm okay just doing a subregion here. The other way, if you're really doing concrete, maybe you want a patio over in front of the doors here. You could do a concrete floor and put that in at a certain height that you think looks right. Um, nice thing about a concrete floor, you can now put chairs and grills and some things like that or cabinets that need a flat surface to be defined on versus a surface that's a little bit of uh, bumpy or wavy. So just a little side note, but for over here, cars, this is perfectly acceptable. And I left a little bit of space between the house because typically you do some landscape or shrubbing over there. But that's how you subdivide regions. No, that was a pretty simple shape. I'm going to do one more because I need a driveway to come up to that. So highlight the top will sell it again. We're going to subdivide once again. I'll look straight down on this in 3D, or I can go back to site plan. You can kind of work in either one, but I do suggest being straight down if you're in 3D mode. Now, this one is just a gravel driveway that comes up. This is going to be a little bit different than what my sheets are showing at the moment. I decided to change this because, after all, this is a cabinet. It shouldn't be right next to a blacktop road. So I'm going to grab, let's see, I could use lime. There's a spline tool. Spline tools are kind of neat. They let you make some curvy shapes, but for the most part, I want a driveway that comes up along the house. And I'm just kind of clicking to create curves like so. And I can right click cancel. I'm gonna come over here. I might do a straight line. It goes along my concrete. Maybe a little bit of a straight line back away. Escape. 
I'll go back into my spline tool or arc tools. If I'm backing off my driveway, I want to have a nice little turnaround spot. Right click cancel. There we go, a little curve. Back to line. Let's see here. Something like that. And then uh, I'm just have it go straight all the way off again too. And I gotta close it in. And so I had to add the line right there. What I'm defining is a closed in area. That's the big thing. Now over here, if I want this to be tighter, right, I should be able to drag it and snap it to that edge, hopefully. Zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And if I want to get right on the specific edges, I should be able to grab corner points like so. I'll grab that corner, restretch that out, reconnect those. Over here, same thing, grab a corner point, snap it to the concrete, grab that purple line, its end point, snap it up. And if I don't like these two, I can also grab the dots and move them a little bit. Yeah, that might have been a little bit extreme. Pull this one back down. I can grab these and adjust the arcs. So that spline tool is pretty flexible. Maybe I want this corner to be rounded. I believe there's a fillet tool. Yep. Click, click. Then I can kind of pick how much round I want there. And it kind of trims off the corner. So there's the drawing tools are pretty handy. Green check mark. Rotate. As you can see it's super thick. So we just we click on that subregion one time. We make it one inch. Enter, enter. And I can set that to gravel. Go in here, find G for gravel. I have a gravel, so that's good. If you don't, you just got to make that new material. Use the library to find the gravel material. And click OK. And it looks pretty similar to what it was, but there we go. So, yeah, I like that way better than my blacktop road. It's a cabin after all. Should be out in the woods or something. Looks good. Probably actually needs a garage, but that's a different story. All right, so that's how subregions work. Let's see what else. Plants. Okay, right? If we're in the woods, we should have some trees. Why not? So for our massing and site, there's site components versus architecture components. It gets a little confusing, but site components. Here's trees are already loaded. Sure, red ash. So let's put maybe we had trees along the driveway over here. Like the way they work. We can click on them, move them around a little bit. Just like most things, you can associate any component to a level and an offset. And these are, I believe, snapping pretty good to a like a default height. Let's put it in realistic mode and see what we get. We get some trees. Look at that. Looks good. Now, some trees show up better than others in realistic mode. Problem with realistic mode? Whoa, where'd the water go? It's there, and it'll show back up when you do renderings. Um, but that's honestly why I usually just keep it in shaded mode most of the time. Just it's easier to see everything going on. Okay, so I'll try a few of those trees and go back to site components. Maybe instead of deciduous, what else do we have here? I don't have any of the coniferouses. Pine trees. And if not, that's fine. I can always load a family. And I can go down in here to site. Gas pumps. Nope. Tree, circle, square. Those are greats. Planting, pot. so we got all kinds of options here. Those are not what I wanted, though. Oh, uh, that's a good question. Where the pine tree? Planting, sorry, not necessarily site planting. I apologize. There's where all our trees are. So we got fall, tropical shrubs. Coniferous. Let's try the RPC. Coniferous. Get that loaded. There we go. Well, these are just little fellers. Go in here though, and you can change it though. There's Douglas fir, 20 footers. 
let's put a couple back in here see how that looks then maybe one over at the end of our walking path escape a couple times and I'll glance at realistic just to kind of see how they're looking yep looks like trees there we go so anyway, the plan is you should go ahead and keep adding a few more trees we should add some shrubs around the house that look nice another thing we can do while we're working on the top of solid sub regions or just finishing some of these details in general is add steps to the front door now we don't have to go and do like formal steps like the inside has from main floor down to basement it gets a little complicated i mean we only need like a step or two a simple way just to add some steps to the house can be by using the floor tool and i'll show you what i mean here so we're just going to create a couple floors that are stacked on top of each other to kind of simulate concrete steps one thing I just have to be really careful of is that this window well, probably should have been a little smaller, is pretty even with the side of the door, but we can just squeeze a set of steps in here. So we are okay yet. So let's go to the site plan. I think that'll be a hair easier. Um, I want to be able to see my walls though. So I'm going to click on the roof one time. And I could do VV and uncheck roofs, but I can also do the highlight it and hit the sunglasses and go hide element. I can't see the door directly, but I can see the box that does define it. But I mean, architecture, floor, um, if you don't have one, which you probably don't, I think I had a four inch concrete floor. So I did the edit, duplicate, made it a six inch one, changed it to be six inches thick. So I have a six inch floor now to use six inch concrete. I'm gonna draw a box, essentially just build right off the side of my window well. There we go. And the first step I do, I'm going to make it plenty big. I thought maybe it might snap to the door, but I'm going to go out plenty far and plenty wide. Green check mark. Go back to 3D for a bit. And there we go. So, yep, that's fine. Out far enough. Um, if I really want to know, I can now edit the boundary here. I'll let I know it looks kind of right so I can click. It'll pull that dimension, hit escape, click on this. Let's just go four feet even. We'll probably do it then. The, this is going to be the bottom step eventually, the base. And I can even pull the width if I want. And we can make this one move. We'll go four by four. Good. Green check mark once again. Now this one's too high. I want this to be the bottom. So I just simply either I can just do a negative offset or I could you know set it even with the top of foundation at first. There we go. Whatever happens to work. That's that's pretty good. I want to rotate and see. And I can look at it from the side to see my is it floating? Yeah, a little bit. The other thing I could do is probably go to main floor and take this section view and move it a little bit. There we go. Oh, that gives me a good look. Yeah, so I could even take this if I want and drop that down like a negative three inches. Enter, enter. Yep, it's okay. There, right? It's like concrete down on the ground. That's step one. Let's go back to site. Do another floor. And another box. I'm going to make that edge match again. You know, this time we're just going to go half. Green check mark. Back to 3D view. Floating way up in the air. Section view. Now, I could try to do offsets, or you can also just manually drag. And that builds it. That changes it too, as well. Unless we have issues. We could also go to modify, align. Bring it down that way. And now it's just a debate if what of our what are the step heights? So I think this lower one probably could have went up a little bit more. So instead of negative three, maybe just negative one inch. And even though these are digital project projects, they're still kind of like tinker time, so to speak. Kind of adjusting and tweaking, moving things around. And there we go. And that and there's a, a tiny air gap there, but we don't 
we could reshape the topo surface if we want. We could add more points and make that better, but I think we're going to be okay. And that's a relatively equal step on each one. Go back to 3D, turn and look, and there we go. We got a nice little set of steps, and the last step is up into the house. Now, if you'd want that step to be level at first, then we just need to add, you know, one more. And I could, I could click this and I could edit the boundary. Go back to site and say, you know what? Yeah, this should be out here. Green check mark. Let's add one more floor yet. One more rectangle. And we could stack a third one. Green check mark. Look at our section views. And this will work out pretty good actually. Reference this down. I like to have a little bit of a step down. So again, if we have water, it's not perfectly running into the house. And there we go. That looks pretty good too. So it wasn't that hard to add a series of steps. Maybe you don't like the overhang on the side. I can argue that I'm going to put railing there. Or I could fix it so it's very equal with the door to it. It's up to you. Now that idea can be carried over to the patio doors. You could have a set of steps. Either a big step that goes door to door. You could have one set for each door. You could have a floating floor, and we would just call it a deck, and I don't get too worried about posts that support it. But you could have a deck and then have a couple steps off. Uh, that's up to you. You pick, but something needs to be done with these doors, either steps, a deck, finish it in some way. It'll show up in your drawings at the end that you've done something. And you could even throw one more subregion in here to connect your parking spot to your steps there so click on it and I can go subdivide just rotate this to a top view and perhaps I should probably just do some lines it's just about as fast there all right kind of create a walking path this way check mark click off there we go. Highlight. Switch it to concrete. Cast in place. Click OK. And change that height to just one inch out of the ground. Click off. And there we go. Now we have a nice little sidewalk. We can go back in and looks like, oh, yeah, Mr. J. Yeah, sure. Click. Edit sketch. Yep, we can drag this over so it matches a little bit better. Check mark back. And there we go. And that's how you easily fix things on the fly too. Now we got a nice little sidewalk over to our front steps. Got some plants. Keep like I said, keep adding those. And it's looking good. Wrapping up this whole topography and solid, and this is kind of a fun one, I think, to work on the outside stuff too. So have a little fun with it yourself. I'm sure there'll be cars and trucks all parked around the house, four-wheelers, maybe a cow or something on top of the hill or, or who knows what. But enjoy, and we'll see you in the next video.